Hi, welcome to our uh, Pharma Topics channel. Uh, this series is uh, related to the 8th semester uh, Pharmacology 3, uh, Unit 5, uh, Chronopharmacology. In this, we are going to see the definition of rhythm and cycles, biological clock and its uh, significance leading to chronotherapy. Let us see what is a rhythm of our biological system. There are different rhythms in our human system. One is ultradian rhythm. It is a cyclic biological function of our body which occurs in less than a day is called ultradian rhythm. Example, impulse generation in neurons uh, which happens uh, within 90 minutes that is a uh, rapid eye movement uh, cycle which happens in the eyes. Next is circadian rhythm. It is the cyclic biological functions of our body that occurs in 24 hours. It is called circadian rhythm. Example, sleep-wake cycle, hormone cycle, platelet aggregation, then infradian rhythm. These are cyclic biological functions of our body that occurs greater than 24 hours. It is called infradian rhythm. Example, menstrual cycle which happens once in 28 days. The next question is, they may ask uh, what is biological rhythm or circadian rhythm. The biological rhythm is also called uh, circadian rhythm, which is uh, a 24-hour uh, day-night cycle. Uh, it is essential to carry out the sleep awakening cycle, maintenance of blood pressure, hormone secretion, metabolic activities. It is the uh, set of cyclic rhythmic changes of all physiological functions, chemical reactions that maintains homeostasis for the biological functioning of the body. The biological rhythm is of two types. One is internal, which is endogenous, and the next one is external. The internal rhythms include regulation of body temperature cycle. External rhythms are controlled by synchronizing the internal cycles with the external stimuli, such as a sleep-wake cycle, uh, which include the environmental cues like sunlight, food, noise, or social interaction. The circadian rhythms include physiological and behavioral rhythms such as sleep-wake cycle, body temperature, patterns of uh, hormone secretion, blood pressure, digestive secretions, levels of alertness and reaction times. The next question is, uh, they may ask a short note on biological clock. The biological class, clock is also called a circadian clock that synchronizes day-night biological functions which is present in the suprachiasmatic nucleus and it composes uh, nearly approximately 10,000 nerve clusters. Uh, the master biological clock is located in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which operates with the multitude of circadian clocks located in the cells, tissues, and different organ systems. The biological or circadian rhythms play an important role in controlling the biological functions. When it gets disturbed, it leads to pathophysiology of diseases. This clock sets the sensitivity of the endocrine glands and controls melatonin synthesis in the pineal gland. The disruption of the biological clock or its uh, synchronization leads to a uh, problem which is uh, called jet lag. It happens in shift workers and it, it occurs in old age also. So these are then detrimentally affecting the well-being and mental and physical performance of a human being. This biological clock is useful in programmed delivery of uh, hormonal drugs related to synchronized therapy for improved pharmacological activity, decrease the development of drug resistance, improve the patient compliance and control feedback mechanisms related to pharmacotherapy. Let us see why uh, and how this happens. Chronopharmacology or chronotherapeutics, both are used uh, uh, in, in, vice versa. They have the same meaning. Chronopharmacology is the science dealing with the optimization of drug effects and reducing the adverse effects by timing medications in relation to the biological rhythm. So, understanding of chronopharmacology helps to decrease the drug-related toxicity, enhance effectiveness, which is explained here with suitable ex examples. Let us see the applications of chronopharmacology with the different examples in this section. Uh, before that, uh, let us see what is chronopharmacokinetics. It is the study of temporal changes in the pharmacokinetics of a drug. It is related to absorption, it is related to distribution, it is related to metabolism and it is related to elimination. Chronothesis is the study of temporal changes in the pharmacodynamics of a drug. Let us see the examples of chronotherapy. 
In cardiovascular system, the amplitude of variation is greater for diastolic pressure when compared to the systolic blood pressure. The blood pressure shoots up at 9 to 11 am and between 6 to 7 pm and it is slightly decreases at the afternoon and profoundly dips at the night. The secretion of atrial natriuretic peptide increases in the early morning and higher incidences of acute myocardial infarction, sudden cardiac death, angina, transient ischemic attack, stroke occur between 6 am to 12 noon. The circadian rhythm of triglycerides, serum cholesterol and other lipid fractions peak their levels in the evening. So let us see how the drugs are given. The ACE inhibitors are administered at the bedtime for better control of blood pressure because the blood pressure shoots up between 9 to 11 am and 6 to 7 pm. So when it is given at the bedtime, it will have its effect in the early morning. Aspirin is to be given at the bedtime to have maximum antiplatelet effect in the morning. Statins are to be given in the evening as HMG GOA, -GOA activity is higher in the evening. Control onset extended release verapamil. It is taken at bedtime. It, its effect peaks from 5 am to 12 noon and ensures no midnight drop in the blood pressure. In the respiratory system, bronchoconstriction increases at the night due to increased parasympathetic tone and decrease in symp uh, sympathetic tone and decrease in the cortisol production at the midnight. At this time, the sensitivity to irritants and allergens occurs due to increased production of IgE and histamine. So, acute attack of asthma is more common in the early morning between 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. The theophylline and beta-2 agonists are administered at the evening to have improved therapeutic effect. So, we are seeing the examples, the system-wise, with some drug examples. The next is endocrine system. The cortisol secretion increases just before awakening in the morning and it is lowest at the midnight. Growth hormone secretion peaks during sleep. Testosterone uh, secretion peaks at the morning and insulin secretion increases after ingestion of meals. Calcitonin secretion increases in the early morning. Thyroid hormone, uh, stimulating hormone, melatonin, prolactin, they reach their peak levels at the night. Luteinizing hormone, renin, angiotensin and aldosterone are all released in the morning and reach their peak levels. So, corticosteroids are given in the as a single morning dose causes uh, less hypothalamus pituitary adrenal suppression. Inhaled corticosteroids are administered as a single dose at 5 to 6 pm is more effective to control bronchial asthma. Early morning hyperglycemia which occurs in type 2 diabetes mellitus as it follows two phenomena. One is a dawn phenomenon and one is somogi phenomenon which is related to the insulin dose. So dawn phenomenon you remember as down that is less insulin. Somogi so much insulin. This is a code which you remember. Let us see what is dawn phenomenon. It is uh, hyperglycemia occurs in early morning rise in the corticosteroids, growth hormone and catecholamines. They increase the blood sugar levels. And the dose of bed bedtime insulin has to be increased in such conditions. Because the dose is less, that is down, it has to be increased. The next phenomenon is somogi phenomenon. You remember as so much insulin. So excessive dose of insulin causes midnight hypoglycemia, causing a compensatory shoot up of early morning glucose levels. And the dose of bedtime uh, insulin has to be reduced in such conditions. Because both of them, they shoot up the blood sugar levels. So ADH analogs has to be administered at bedtime to control nocturnal enuresis in children. In the GI tract, the basal gastric acid secretion is increased at time between 10 pm to 2 am and ulcer pain is worst at this time. There is nocturnal uh, ulcer. Ulcer healing is related to acid secretion. Therefore, evening dose of H2 blockers or proton pump inhibitors are highly effective. In CNS, Melatonin is secreted in the night by pineal gland which induces sleep. Bedtime administration of uh, sedative hypnotics and melatonin uh, agonist that is Ramaltian improves the efficacy of these medications. In the musculoskeletal system, rheumatoid arthritis symptoms such as morning stiffness peaks at 8 to 11 am. So long acting NSAIDs are given at bedtime. 
osteoarthritis symptoms peaks between 2 pm to 8 pm and administration of morning dose of NSAIDs is suitable for afternoon worsening and evening dose is suitable for night time worsening. The cancer cells lose the internal timekeeping mechanism. Example, in lymphoma cancer cells, the DNA synthesis peaks at midnight, whereas it peaks around noon in the normal cells. So, yes, phase specific cancer therapy at the late night is most advantageous. Skin disorders such as psoriasis, cell proliferation peaks between 9 pm to 3 am, and the inflammatory activity peaks at the night and it is less in the morning. So, the sensitivity of histamine is highest at night and topical corticosteroids activity is higher at afternoon than in the morning. There are some chronopharmaceutical technologies. One is a parenteral chronomodulating infusion pumps, controlled release microchips and oral formulations, chronopharmacotherapeutic oral drug absorption system that is CODAS, Diffucaps, Oros and Pulsin cap. These are some of the formulations which are available as for chronotherapy. They may ask a short note on melatonin. It is a hormone secreted by pineal gland and the suprachiasmatic nucleus of brain that ensues melatonin is secreted at the night. It is involved in circadian rhythm regulation that controls sleep, hormone release at night, seasonal reproduction, retinal physiology, antioxidant free radical scavenging activity, cardiovascular regulation, immune activity and it also is concerned with the carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. So, it is an important chronobiotic hormone regulator of cancerous cell growth. Melatonin suppresses the cell growth and multiplication, inhibits proliferation of neoplastic cells, acts as a differentiating agent and induces apoptosis of cancerous cells. Melatonin is used in a combination therapy with anti other anti-cancer drugs. It reduces the toxicity of chemotherapy or radiotherapy and en enhances the therapeutic efficacy. They may ask in two marks uh, that is what is jet lag? It is extreme tiredness fatigue and irritability causing by uh, long flight journeys across different time zones or people it occurs in people who work in shift also face shift worker disease without traveling. So, the symptoms induce disturbed sleep, daytime fatigue, stomach problems or mood changes. It is caused by disruption of the circadian rhythms. Melatonin is the remedy for jet lag which acts as a sleeping aid. So, it is a short information of the unit 5 which is related to chronopharmacology. I hope it will be useful for you. Thank you for listening. Happy learning. Kindly share this to more of your friends. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. Other descriptions are given in the description box. Uh, one more video is also available for chronopharmacology which I will be giving in the description box. Kindly go through it. Go through other units also, prepare well for your exams and score more. Thank you.